What is up, guys, and welcome to an all-new edition of On The Fly. I am your host, Katie DeFeo. Let's get into the show. As you know, very exciting. This Friday, the official NCAA tournament begins for women's lacrosse. It's a special time of year. It's May. I can't believe we made it this far. In this episode of On The Fly, I'm going to cover my picks, uh, my bracket. Obviously, you know who I'm rocking with 100%. It's not a secret at all, and I will run you through that. Additionally, I have my upsets. I have teams that I think people are sleeping on that are going to make waves. But first, I just want to talk about the Division II tournament for a second. So I'm not particularly very familiar with Division II lacrosse. I didn't watch very much Division II lacrosse. I don't have any friends who play D2 lacrosse, so it's a new world to me. But on Selection Sunday, when all the teams got their their uh, spot in the bracket, everyone was all excited, very happy day, I noticed some rumblings on Twitter from girls who played for Lemoyne, and they were basically saying that they were the number two team in the country, they only lost once all year, and they were left out of the tournament. So I personally don't understand how that makes any sense at all. Um, so I tweeted about it and some more people tweeted about it. We all started tweeting about it. Um, so NCAA, if you're watching this, you're definitely not. Um, hey, it's me, Katie again. And also, could you please explain? Explain to the girls of Lemoyne why they're not in the tournament. To me, if you're the number two team in the country, you would think that you would be in the NCAA tournament. That sounds blasphemous. I understand someone said it's like a regional thing. They do it by regions. Maybe it's time to do away with that. Lemoyne deserves an explanation. Okay, now let's get into the Division I tournament. Obviously, my favorite, everybody's favorite, is the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. America's team. I got a FaceTime call from Kerrigan Miller during the selection show with the rest of the UNC team as they were watching to see who would be playing them in the first round. They get a bye, so two teams will battle it out to see who will eventually play North Carolina. Beyond UNC, we obviously know that they're a favorite. They're America's team. They're the best team in the country, arguably the best team we've ever seen. I've said that before, ever. I have a few other favorites that I think are pretty obvious to some people, but you know, I just want to run through them again. Boston College, that's a team that's had an up and down season. They don't have the complete perfect roster of UNC, but they're fighters and they know how to win games. They're well coached. So I am looking for Boston College to also make it far in this tournament. Additionally, Syracuse. Syracuse was number two. UNC was number one all season until they met. UNC absolutely rolled them. And then in the ACC tournament, they played again and it was a little bit closer. I have my eyes on Syracuse as well. Cuse, I'm with you guys. Cuse, great program, great place. Gary Gates seems like a nice dude. I've said that before, but obviously my biases are going to get in the way. I'm rooting for North Carolina to win the whole thing. I want to be in Towson for Memorial Day, hoisting the trophy with the North Carolina Tar Heels. I will be wearing this sweatshirt and I will be there. So obviously you have the Blue Bloods, you have the big national program, but you know a matchup that I'm gonna love to watch? Once North Carolina beats Hopkins or JMU, whoever they have to play, they're gonna get to play, probably, the Stony Brook Seawolves. Stony Brook, they don't get enough respect. They don't. To be on the Stony Brook women's lacrosse team, it's a little bit of a different thing. So a lot of schools, a lot of schools from Power 5 conferences, they'll schedule some warm-up games earlier in the season against teams that they know they'll beat. And then the rest of their season, as they get into, you know, as they get into late February, March, April, is when they play the teams in their conference who are usually the strongest teams. So when they when they peak and they're playing their best lacrosse, that's when they're playing against the best opponents. Stony Brook, on the other hand, since their conference is not as strong, they have to schedule the toughest teams in the country early in the season. It was like the first game of the year when Joe Spelina announced that he was going to take them down in Chapel Hill and play the number one team in the country with all this hype. Like, they don't care. They're not afraid. You better believe that they will be ready. They roll through their conference every year and they still get no respect. I'm excited to see what Stony Brook does this postseason. They're playing North Carolina in the Elite Eight. I, that's tough for me. I'm not going to lie. That's tough. It's the battle of Kaylee Huff versus Kerrigan Miller. Who am I going to choose? I don't know. I can't tell you. We're going to cross that bridge when we get there. But Stony Brook is one of my sleeper picks to make the Final Four. They are fully equipped for a Final Four. They get terribly seeded every single year because nobody respects them. It's a complete joke, but they're a really good team. So keep an eye out. Another first second round matchup that I have my eyes on is a potential Jacksonville versus Florida rematch. If you'll remember, all the hoopla, all the hype around Unleashed started with Jacksonville being America's team. I successfully predicted in my first ever episode of the show that Jacksonville would beat Florida, and then they did. And then we had Sarah Elms on the show and she talked about it, but guess what? It's been a couple months now and they're about to play again, potentially. Jacksonville needs to beat Vanderbilt, which they will, and Florida needs to beat Mercer, which they will. Then you get Jacksonville versus Florida to see who's gonna go play Syracuse. I'm gonna predict it again. Jacksonville women's lacrosse will beat Florida in the 2021 NCAA tournament. Book it, America's team. Listen. I've never, ever, ever been wrong about a Jacksonville game before in my entire life, and I'm not starting today. They are my second sleeper to make a Final Four. I'll be honest, a Final Four. Jacksonville, demand some respect. I'm with you guys, America's team. There's one more thing that I need to talk about, the Unleashed Bracket Challenge. If you fill out a bracket and email it to at unleashed at premierlacrosseleague.com by Friday, before the game starts, prizes are soon to be announced. I'm gonna fill out my bracket and I will put it on the Unleashed Instagram before Friday, guys. 
Thank you so much for watching. Make sure you watch this tournament. It's going to be epic. There's so many storylines and rematches and exciting games to happen. I cannot believe that we are here at this point in the season already. It feels like the season just started yesterday. This has been a fun journey, but we're not stopping yet. My bracket will be on the Unleashed Instagram by Friday. Thank you guys so much for watching. But don't watch me. Go watch. Go watch the games. Peace.